Welcome to episode number one of what I hope to be many of Mike Drinks a Beer. This is sort of a natural outcropping or outgrowth of my beer review blog, The Brew Review, which, which is on WordPress right now. You can see 15 back reviews or something like that on that website. The reason I wanted to start a beer video blog, uh, or, or video reviews rather, is because it takes a really long time to write a beer review, and it's really sort of an awkward process to sit there by yourself and make notes while you're drinking beer. It just, it takes a long time, the beer isn't as enjoyable, and it's just not a very fun process. Usually when you're drinking beer, you're with friends, you're with family, you're at a restaurant, you're doing something enjoyable, and the beer is this nice little backdrop to that activity. Trying to sit down and make all these notes while you're drinking the beer is really awkward, and I don't like doing it. Additionally, I'm also a grad student at Notre Dame in my copious amounts of spare time, and so I don't really have time to write these formal beer reviews, and so I wanted to do it this way uh, and share my appreciation and love of beer with you. Now, I don't really want this beer blog to have a whole lot of uh, form to it. I don't want every episode to be the exact same, but it does have sort of an, uh, a straightforward format for every time. I'm going to show you what beer I'm drinking. I'll show you the glass I'm drinking it out of, if I drink it out of a glass that day, and then just tell you uh, how I experience the beer as I'm drinking it. And maybe that'll let you uh, decide to go buy that beer and try it yourself. Maybe it will turn you on to a certain category. Or maybe it will make you think, well, if he's, if he's tasting those flavors, I have no interest in that beer. Which is good. We don't want you to waste money on beer that you don't like. So uh, that's the really brief uh, intro to this series. And I know that the, uh, the, the, the format of this, the, the video isn't very good, the audio isn't very good either. I know there's some screen glare on my glasses here. Um, I'm recording this on a laptop. This is what I've got right now. If this series gets some traction, if it starts to get some views, then I'll think about upgrading uh, to a, a better camera, some maybe some better audio equipment. But for right now, until I really know where this is going to go, I'm just going to stick with this. And I think you can hear me well enough to know what's going on, okay? So without further ado, let's begin our very first intro, uh, or rather very first entry, uh, into Mike Drinks a Beer. Now, full disclosure, I have drank the beer that I'm reviewing today before. Uh, for the first episode, I wanted to be sort of safe and know what I was drinking and have a little bit of an opinion about the beer beforehand. Uh, so in this first uh, experimental episode, I don't have to think too awful hard about what I'm drinking. So, our first beer for Mike Drinks a Beer is going to be Falls City Pale Ale. Now, certainly many of you will have heard of Falls City before, especially some of a certain age. Not calling anybody old, uh, but this is a sort of recently resurrected brand that is now on the mass market again. I'll be drinking it out of the, uh, the typical shaker pint or straight-sided pint glass. Uh, everyone's got some of these at home. If you're like me, you've got a bajillion of them. And this, of course, is my Notre Dame glass, which I like to use if I don't have uh, a branded glass for a particular beer. And uh, because I want to support as many brands as I possibly can, the ones that I enjoy, I'll be opening the beer with my busted knuckle bottle opener. This is from the Big Woods Brewing Company in Nashville, Indiana, right in the heart of what I like to call the Hoosier Riviera, and I highly recommend a visit to Big Woods Brewing Company. So, let's give this beer a try. Okay, so, pretty good pour, if I do say so myself. Got a decent head on this beer. I'd say it's about, I don't know, an inch and three-fourths, two inches, but it is going away very quickly. It's got a nice color on it, though. Um, typical pale ale color. You, This isn't really surprising here. Um, it's a little bit lighter than I can tell on the screen there. It looks like a just sort of a pale gold on my screen, or in, in person here. I can tell that it's a little bit darker there. Um, but, it, you know, it's not a bad color. It's nothing that you wouldn't expect out of a pale ale. Let's give it a sniff. If I had to describe this aroma in one word, it's underwhelming. Not a whole lot going on here, especially for pale ale. Uh, for pale ale, you would expect to smell uh, those 
uh, citrus notes. You would get the hoppy, uh, the herbal aspect of the beer in the in the nose, and you just don't get that here. Uh, you know, to be quite honest, if somebody poured this and a Bud Light right next to each other and had me sniff both, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two on a blind taste, or smell, rather. Yeah, and see, you can tell that the nose, uh, the head rather, has really gone down. We're down to probably half an inch at this point and still receding, just like my hairline did at one point. Um, so the head, it was nice when you first poured it, but it goes away pretty quickly. Nose, underwhelming. Let's give it a shot. It's not bad. It's not my favorite beer ever. But it's not bad. Um, on on first taste, this is relatively cold. There is a little bit of bitterness there. Uh, quite a bit more yeast than bitterness, though, which is not what you want in pale ale. Um, so you know, on on the first uh, on the first pass, this might be okay, especially with food. If I was if I was drinking this with a snack or something like that, I would probably be better disposed towards it. Uh, but on on first taste, not bad, not great. Uh, let's give it a few more minutes. Uh, and I'll check back in here, and we'll see how it's like once it's warmed up a little bit. All right, so we've given it a few minutes to uh, to heat up a little bit and for me to kind of warm myself up to this beer. And I think there's one word that I could use to describe this beer that would really capture it all. Flabby. Um, it's, it just tastes a little bit watery, a little bit too yeasty, and to my palate anyway, this is not exactly what I would look for in a beer. However, I think there might be a little bit of an explanation for that. If you go to the back side of the Falls City bottle, um, there's a little bit of an explanation of where this beer comes from, so I'll read it to you. Falls City began as a craft beer in 1905, made in small batches with only the finest ingredients. Now, has any beer ever been made from anything but the finest ingredients? Who's going to say, we use really sh** ingredients in our beer right on the bottle? This all-new English-style pale ale is handcrafted in small batches and is reminiscent of a style that Falls City made up until 1935. Um, so, this is where I think the explanation is. I think standards change over time. And this actually might be a fairly accurate representation of what the beer was like right in 1935. Um, I think the English might take exception to saying that this is a good example of their pale ale. Um, but that may be where this comes from. Let's try it again. It's a little better. If you give it some time to warm up, uh, I think that that yeast character disappears just a little bit. Oddly enough, you would think that it might come to the fore with some more heat, uh, but it doesn't. This isn't too bad. You will see, however, that uh, it's keeping a little bit of a head. Not huge, but it is keeping it a little bit. Certainly better than many mass market beers that you could buy. Which brings me to another very important point of Mike Drinks a Beer. As far as I know, to the best of my knowledge, you will never see a beer produced by or owned by AB InBev or Miller Coors Brewing. It just ain't going to happen. Um, and I'll tell you why. Those two companies really grind my gears because there's no truth in advertising. If you look at a lot of their packaging, uh, you're, you're made to think that this beer comes from two brothers out in the woods, that it's been their life's dream to build this brewery and produce beer in small batches that's so delicious. Um, not true. If AB InBev or MCB owns it, that is not true. And I don't fault the companies uh, that sell themselves to these uh, to these major corporations at all because, you know, if you spent a, a lifetime building up a brewery and somebody comes along with a huge fat check, I don't blame you at all. I'd sell out in a heartbeat probably as well. But I know that I'm never going to go into brewing so I can say that with impunity. You will not see beers from those two companies um, on this show. And if you if someone happens to request one of those beers, I'm not going to do it. Uh, because I just I won't give any money to those corporations um, willingly. As far as I know, I might accidentally buy a beer that, that is on my one of them, but I'll do my best to scope everything out and make sure that I don't do that. Let's give it another shot. Uh, 
copper. Definitely some copper in there too, which is pleasant. Um, I think it does demand food. I wouldn't recommend drinking this beer on its own. I think if you're having this with um, certainly something relatively hearty, maybe a little bit of spicy food, that would be good. I, I wouldn't recommend you know throwing this with your uh, grilled fish or anything like that. Uh, but you know, I'm going to eat some roast beef here in a minute. It might be a good beer to go with that. Um, but it does require food. This is not really a good standalone beer. And, you know, you might take it to a party with people that you know uh, don't really have very broad beer horizons, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but if you want to show up with something that's a little bit different but isn't going to scare anybody off, this would probably be uh, a pretty good recommendation. Of course, uh, that also works the other way, too. You can take a beer that nobody wants to drink, and then that way it's all for your for you. Um, there's about half of this beer left. I can't imagine that it's going to change a whole lot in the next 10 or 15 minutes because it has warmed up considerably after I've gotten it out of the fridge. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut things off here. Uh, thank you for joining me for this first episode of Mike Drinks a Beer. This is our pilot show. Um, of course, I'm not relying on anybody else to, you know, pick up my season or cancel me so I can do this as long as I possibly want. Uh, but send me some feedback. Uh, send me an email to MikeDrinksABeer at gmail.com. Let me know what you think about this. Put it down in the comments below. Uh, and hopefully this is something that I can do on a regular basis. All right? Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>